So um, let's first move to the minimum threshold for the move. I've changed it to 0 0.035 and my uh, sound effect for footstep run 0 0.25, which seems to be okay. Okay, let's add some sounds for our uh, rifles before we continue. Um, we're going to work on the UI, uh, but first we're going to add um, sounds for the, for, the, for the weapon. So let's create an empty game object for our assault rifle, and let's call this uh, sound effects. I'm, I'm again using a game object for this because we probably need more sound, sound effects than just fire and reload. So let's go on fire or shoot. Add the audio controller to it and add your rifle shoot to it. Uh, I think we can keep the delay between clips at zero because that will be controlled by our rate of fire of our weapon. Now let's create a new game object, call it reload. And do the same thing audio controller and our uh, reload. Audio. Let's um, add one, uh, maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.3, so it won't repeat when we are, um, uh, or it will only play once. Okay. Now uh, let's open up our shooter here and make two uh, properties for the inspector audio controller uh, for our uh, audio reload and one serialized field audio controller for our audio shoot or fire. Now in our reload we say audio reload play simple as that and in our fire we do exactly the same thing um, uh, audio fire Audio fire play. So that will give us sounds for um, assault rifle. Now just assign the uh, effects. So the fire and the reload. This should be it. Let's hit play. There we go. I'm gonna lower my sound. But you see it. Uh, it works the way we. Uh, I hope it would be. Now it might be time as well to in, uh, increase our speed of our bullet and also remove the mesh. So, because it's still very uh, slow, uh, with the slow rate firing. Uh, to do so, go to our um, projectile we're using here. Uh, let's see, it got a mesh, so we can remove the uh, mesh collider from it. Uh, sorry, the mesh renderer, because we're not going to going to render the cube. Uh, so now we don't see it, but it still works exactly the same. Uh, and let's change the speed to like 50. Uh, let's reload. Go. So it's a little bit, maybe it's wiser to first uh, adjust the speed and then remove the mesh uh, renderer. But I think this is uh, maybe like so. Once we go um, with the, uh, once we add puffs to the, uh, to the impact, we have a better view. But this uh, seems to be okay. Because it's a prefab, we don't need to uh, save anything at all. So we can just uh, quit and it will keep the same changes we made. All right, um, let's do it for the shotgun too. You could, maybe it's more easy to, yeah, let's do that. Let's uh, just uh, make a duplicate of the, of the shotgun. It's still, it's still an, uh, uh, there it is, duplicate. It's still a placeholder, so it doesn't really matter if you're not using any different weapons. But, uh, shotgun. And in our sound effects, just change the fire. Later, we, we're going to make uh, prefabs for this, but not really necessary right now. So let's make a shotgun clip there. Let's 
see what happens. Uh, there we go. Yeah, works. Nice. Cool. So with that uh, in, uh, in place, uh, let's uh, work on a very fast way to, a uh, quick way to show um, our inventory uh, bullets remaining in the UI. Uh, to do so, let's uh, create a new um, UI um, canvas. Call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna, just going to keep it a canvas. Now I'm going to add a new image and I'm calling this um, uh, let's see, image. Not really sure why I don't see it, but that's okay. Uh, an image, and we're going to add some text to it. Maybe oh, there it is. It's in the in the bottom right. So it could be that it isn't in your bottom right, but in the center. Um, but what we're going to do? We're going to hit shift and alt when we change the uh, rect uh, transforms position the anchor if we hit shift and alt and uh, we, we should do set the pivot and also set the position so if we click here it will drop us to the lower right part and then we're gonna adjust it a little bit from the from the edge and here as well and let's make it a little bit less big you can of course make this whatever you want and let's also make it uh, black with like a little alpha something like this background uh, let's call this uh, ammo counter maybe better let's make a new UI text element and let's position this um, let's first align it text line to the right and uh, width of the con of the container was 100 so let's change this to 100 as well and let's make the hmm, maybe like no, no let's keep this at 30 first change our fonts uh, a little bit uh, what's it's going to say here for now is going to be um, uh, like uh, we got 20, 120. Uh, this is uh, the, the left side will be our ammo in the rifle. This will be uh, the active weapon what we have in the container in our inventory. Okay, now let's make this uh, white, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's make sure it's going to fit in. Yeah, something. This should be okay. 2120. Okay, let's move it a little bit uh, to the side here as well. Minus five. Okay, let's keep it like this. Maybe if we add, yeah, this, this, fit, this fits in. So let's keep it like this. Now let's create a new uh, script. First, create a new folder. Call this UI. And let's call this ammo counter. Uh, we're going to use the uh, Unity Engine uh, UI. Unity Engine UI to get access to the uh, UI components. We need the element which will hold the um, the text element so serialized field which will hold the ammo counter uh, text text and we're gonna need a reference to our player uh, which we have so let's uh, call this player uh, maybe we need an inventory better uh, so it's gonna be container inventory when we start, we say game manager. It's like we did a few uh, episodes ago on local player joint. 
like so. Then we say inventory equals, uh, we don't have it public, so get component inventory. Right now, um, this is actually not very, uh, it's a big container, not very um, proper way to program this because we are assuming the player has a container, but we're going to fix that later. Uh, player. So now we have the have the inventory, and now we need the um, the weapon as well. So let's say um, uh, we get a reference to our player shoot because it has the active weapon which we can use. So in our ammo counter, um, do we uh, is it public? Player player shoot yet? Yeah, it's public. So player shoot player shoot this equals our player player shoot all right now we want to know when the when the uh, ammo is being changed so in our player shoot we have um, our equip we don't have any we have fire but needs to bubble down from our uh, weapon, so from our shooter, where we actually are firing. Maybe our reloader even, uh, which is a public method, so maybe it would be wise, because uh, in our rifle we have access to the... Uh, let me check this real quick. Shooter. Uh, player shoot the active weapon is uh, a shooter yeah so what we're gonna do we're gonna make an event here in our weapon reloader when the weapon is being changed so uh, let's make a public system uh, sorry public event system action on um, ammo changed which is uh, could be anything, receive ammo or uh, picking up ammo or uh, whatever. Now, when we are reloading, we're gonna say on ammo changed. Uh, first, check if it's assigned. If ammo changed, not equals no. On ammo changed. Um, this is taken in our reload. So this is the wrong place. We need to put it here. And on our take from clip, uh, which is called from our uh, shooter, when we actually fire with a reloader, we say if uh, the same thing. There we go. Now we could pass in the um, amount of bullets remaining. Uh, we have the inventory here as well, so it might be better to uh, let me check here yeah yeah we could do it from our uh, from here from our reloader as well so maybe that is even better to not use the inventory here but when we have the uh, player shoot um, reloader or not Oh, wait, wait. Player shoot, active weapon, sorry. Then we have our uh, reloader, which has the on ammo change event. Now let's make a delicate for it. Um, that didn't compile yet, maybe something wrong. Wait, wait, no. So let's try it again. No, it doesn't give me uh, on how oh, there it is on handle and ammo changed. Now, now the, when the uh, ammo is changed, we could get a reference to our. Uh, let's do that at first. So 
a reloader, we have uh, rounds remaining in clip. So let's first just say uh, text uh, text equals this. Okay, let's see just what, what happens when we assign our. Um, you could of course make um, a new game object and assign the ammo counter to a UI manager, but first we're going to do it like uh, like this. Uh, give it the text. Let's see what happens. Uh, nothing. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, this is an integer, so we need to make it a string for now. Just to see if, if something is changing. No, it's not. So the event isn't uh, called. So let's check if the uh, print if it gets initialized. Uh, no. So the local player isn't joined. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Uh, Maybe in the awake. Now we got some more. Okay, there we go. Now the third person camera is having. Hmm. Seven. So let's make sure. It looks like uh, the on play on player local player joint is uh, now uh, throwing this, uh, everything in uh, making a problem for everything. So let's make sure we have a local player here. So if a local player not equals no, maybe equals no, then return. So in our uh, third person camera, Let's see what happens now. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't assign it anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's close up a little bit here. Stuff we don't uh, use right now. Should have an now it works like so. Seems like now I'm using the same overload. Uh, this the event the is only called once, and I'm not really sure why that. What's uh, what's the case here? What's the problem here? Um, I'm going to quit the movie and continue when I got the uh, solution for it. Uh, 